Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're looking at a paper that challenges a widely held belief about LLMs, which is that if you want to take a basic foundation model and make it perform well on a domain-specific task, for example, medicine, then you have to use fine-tuning. What the authors in this paper are showing is that you can get better results than fine-tuning with prompt engineering. Now, this is great news because fine-tuning is a pretty heavyweight operation. You need lots of data. You need a lot of expertise in how to fine-tune a model. And it involves building a new model with updated weights. If you can get as good or better performance without fine-tuning, simply using some prompt engineering, that's a much faster route. Before we dive into the techniques they've used, let's look at some of the results they're seeing. These graphs show the results of various medicine benchmarks on LLMs. On the left, you see performance on MedQA, and you can see that the best performance up to now was by the MedPalm series of models, which are fine-tuned models on top of the Palm and Palm 2 foundation LLMs. You can see GPT-4 by itself over here with just a simple prompt. And this blue line shows the results they've gotten with the prompt engineering techniques in this paper. So they're beating MedPalm 2, which was fine-tuned without any fine-tuning. The spider graph on the right shows similar performance comparisons on many other medicine knowledge benchmarks. And you can see how it is beating out MedPalm 2 on all of them. They achieve these results with a collection of prompt engineering techniques, so let's look at each one of them in turn. The first technique they use is a twist on few-shot prompting. Now, few-shot prompting is where when you give an LLM a task to solve, you give it a few examples of both the task and its corresponding solution in the prompt. The catch here is that you need to construct these examples in a way that are really illustrative and capture the gist of the kinds of problems you want to solve for that particular task. And so usually you will have to involve some expert humans, people that are domain-specific experts, to handcraft these few-shot examples. The insight of the authors here is that you can use the training set itself as a source of few-shot examples. And what they do here is very similar to similarity search in a vector embedding space, the kind of technique that you'd use for retrieval augmented generation. So given a test example, you find training examples that are close to it in a vector space, and you use those as the examples in your few-shot prompt. And this is much faster than fine-tuning. Another technique you'll see very often combined with few-shot prompting is chain of thought. The idea of chain of thought prompting is that you ask the LLM when trying to perform a task to generate its reasoning behind how it is arriving at an answer. And this almost always results in much more accurate answers. Once again, just like few-shot prompting, you need to give it a few examples of the kinds of reasoning you're looking for. And you rely on domain-specific human experts to handcraft these example chains of thought. And again, the authors here have the insight that you can actually use the LLM itself to craft these chains of thought from example questions and answers in the training set. Here you see their template prompt for how they're using the LLM to generate chains of thought from the training set. Now you do need to be aware of the risk of hallucinations. The LLM might generate chains of thought that are incorrect. But here you do have your training set, so you know what the ground truth answer is. And they use a simple filtering technique where if the generated chain of thought with its answer does not match the ground truth in the training set, they discard that sample. And while this is not entirely foolproof, this still gives you a good filter for 
incorrect reasoning chains. And then the last challenge to overcome is position bias, which means that when an LLM is given a multiple choice question to solve, we often see that it will pick one position over the others, regardless of the correctness of that option. And to address this position bias, the authors shuffle the choices of multiple choice questions and they make multiple predictions with the LLM with a temperature greater than zero. And with this, they get a number of answers and they choose the most consistent one, the one that is picked consistently even after shuffling the choices. So we've seen all these prompting techniques and how the authors are using this general idea of using the LLM itself, which in this case is GPT-4, so it's a fairly powerful large model, to actually craft the prompts themselves so that you don't need human domain experts at each step. The way it's all put together is in two stages. There is a pre-processing phase before you give the tasks to the LLM and then the inference phase where you're solving the questions themselves. In pre-processing, you take your training set, you embed it in a vector space, you ask GPT-4 to create a chain of thought and predict the answer for each question in your training set. And if it gets it right, you store that entire set of information, the question, the answer, the chain of thought, and its embedding. Now when you're answering real questions after the pre-processing step, at inference time, you take the question that you're trying to answer, you embed it in the same vector space, and find the closest examples to your input question in that vector space. And those closest examples serve as your few-shot chain of thought example for the prompt you give to GPT-4 to solve this question. And you don't just get one prediction from GPT-4, you repeat this process by shuffling the option order and then trying to pick the most consistent answer. This diagram shows how all these techniques are put together and how that improves the score on a benchmark of question and answer tests. So you start with zero shot, you move up to few shot and chain of thought and constructing prompts with nearest neighbors and then shuffling choices and picking the most consistent answer. And this gets you all the way from about 80% to 90% performance on this MedQA benchmark. Now you might be thinking that this collection of techniques for prompt engineering can be used in other domains too, not just medicine. It's just that for medicine, they happen to have good comparisons with fine-tuned models. And so the authors actually took the MMLU benchmark, which contains questions from many different topics, not just medicine, and performed tests with these prompt engineering techniques on subsets of MMLU. And in this spider graph, you can see how MedPrompt, which is their collection of prompt engineering techniques, compares to few shot and zero shot on various parts of MMLU, like electrical engineering or law or accounting or philosophy. And you can see how in pretty much all of them except psychology, this collection of prompt engineering outperforms the other techniques on MMLU. So that shows that this collection of techniques is actually more generally applicable. So that was a quick look at a paper which shows how you can actually use prompt engineering techniques based on few shot chain of thought techniques to outperform very specialized fine-tuned models on very domain-specific benchmarks, but using just untuned basic foundation models plus these prompt engineering techniques. I hope you enjoyed that. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing, like the video, leave a comment, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.